back again with another what I eat in a week. This one is a dinner edition. I love dinner. Sometimes I crave something a little bit lighter and healthier. Other times I want something just more comforting. And all of these meals I feel like are very filling and are really delicious. You can also customize them to whatever you have in your pantry. I always try to make my recipes as accessible as possible using ingredients that you can even find at Walmart. And most of these are whole foods, plant-based, so you can just use whatever fresh produce you have on hand to recreate them and I hope that you enjoy them and get hungry. Let's get into it. This sushi bowl recipe is one of my favorites and I eat it almost every single week. The main base for this is the sushi rice. So I'm cooking this with brown rice, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of rice vinegar, and some salt. And you always want to rinse your water before you cook it. I don't know what it is, but it makes a really big difference. And just cook your rice according to the package. I do a really confusing way where I cook it twice and then use a towel to absorb the excess moisture, but it really doesn't make that big of a difference. So after it's done cooking, lay it out on a tray to cool off and then mix together your rice vinegar and your sugar until they dissolve and then also add in your salt and just make sure that's well combined and pour it over your rice. It's ideal to do this after the rice has cooled and then just prep your veggies. I'm using sweet potatoes and I just boil these until they're soft and I cut them long ways and into cubes for two different versions of this bowl and did the same thing with the carrots and cucumber. I have sides of sprouts and furikake rice seasoning, some pickled ginger, and of course I have avocado and nori for making the rolls. I also have scallions because they taste so good on everything. And now it's the best part, it's just assembling the bowl. So start off with your brown rice, add the cubed cucumber. And this is how I normally eat the bowl. I just put everything together cubed so that I can mix it all up and have a little bit of everything in each bite. And then of course add the delicious toppings. And I use this miso mayo dressing, which I honestly regret. I feel like it tastes so good without anything on top, but my friend really likes using this sauce. So I tried it out and I also added some sriracha on top, but trust me, these flavors on their own are so delicious, especially the pickled ginger. It has kind of a poke bowl vibe. And then this is the second option if you want to just make hand rolls. So it's the same thing. You're just gonna take rectangle pieces of nori, put everything on there, and then just roll them up and you can pre-make these rolls and then just have them even as an appetizer. But yeah, it is kind of fun to make them and those are the two sushi bowl variations that I make. You feel full after eating this, but still really light at the same time. This noodle bowl is basically a macro bowl with the rice noodles as the base and you just add whatever you have in your fridge. So I'm adding a taro burger, some frozen butternut squash that I just cooked up. This adds an amazing flavor. I know it seems random, but it is so bomb. I made some kinpira gobo, which is more of a traditional Japanese dish using burdock root and carrot. Burdock root has so many health benefits and you can find them at most Asian markets, but of course this is optional. All you're going to do is cut it in half and then cut it in diagonal strips and then cut it again into these little strips and rinse it until the water runs clear, which shouldn't take too long. You can even just let the burdock root sit in the water and then do the same thing with your carrot it, just cut it into thin matchbox little strips. Then you're just going to saute this with some sesame oil and make sure those get a little bit cooked up, maybe a little bit browned, and then add in the carrots after those have been cooking for just a few minutes. I added in some rice vinegar, some salt, and pretty much all the ingredients I added to the sushi rice, except I also added some soy sauce, um, or you can use liquid aminos. And on top, I just added some furikake because I love sesame on everything. And I also prepared some lotus root, which I found at the market. So these are just frozen pieces of lotus root that I sauteed and steamed with coconut aminos, which gave it like a sweet kind of flavor. And if you keep cooking them, they turn crispy, but I like them a little bit soft. And for the sauce, this is honestly the most important part, whatever you put in your bowl. This is just one tablespoon of tahini and then a whole lot of coconut aminos mixed together and a squeeze of lime. You can also use apple cider vinegar to give it a little bit of an acidic kick and that is the dressing 
put it on everything. It's great. I have pickled ginger and more furikake and sprouts as toppings for this. And then I just assembled the bowl. So this is really versatile. And like I said, the butternut squash seems random, but it gives a really nice creamy saucy flavor that's delicious. And just experiment with whatever vegetables you have. I added scallions to this as well because they're really yummy. And you can add absolutely anything you want to this. If you have a good sauce, I feel like everything just tastes delicious. And I made this for my friend and she said the veggie burger was even too much because it's so filling on its own. These cauliflower buffalo wings are one of my favorite things to eat as a vegan. You're just gonna wanna chop a head of cauliflower and prepare one bowl of flour, a big bowl of breadcrumbs, one cup of some kind of plant milk of your choice. I use almond milk, tortillas, avocado, cilantro, celery, and sprouts. And preheat your oven to 410 degrees while you're preparing these. All you're going to do is add your one cup of flour to a big bowl and stir it in with your one cup of plant milk. And this is my favorite way to line up this little Thing that's gonna happen where you just dip your cauliflower into the batter and then toss it in the breadcrumbs and then put it on the pan. This creates the least mess. And I love using a big bowl when tossing the cauliflower because it's just really easy for the breadcrumbs to get combined. Once they're all battered up and covered in breadcrumbs, just put it in your oven for 15 to 20 minutes. That should cook them all the way through. And you can put absolutely any sauce that you want on here. I just love hot sauce and buffalo sauce. So that's what I did. And I love using tongs to dip the cauliflower in the sauce so it's as clean as possible. And just make as many of these as you want. And I just put them in my tortillas after I heated them up with some romaine lettuce, avocado, the celery, it just goes so well with anything buffalo. So these are one of my favorites and putting them in tacos just makes them even more satiating and filling. But you could of course have these buffalo wings with just rice or just on their own as an appetizer, but they're so bomb and I highly recommend them. This is my go-to salad, just romaine, lettuce, cucumber, sprouts, avocado. I often massage the avocado into the leaves and then a dressing of carrot, shallot, rice vinegar, ginger, and miso paste, which I usually blend together and it makes a really nice creamy carrot ginger dressing, but I just put it directly on top. And I also add cilantro to my salads, which I love so much and I feel like a lot of people don't do that, but it adds a really good flavor and it's so delicious. This creamy broccoli soup is so easy. I don't even have measurements for it and it always comes out great. You're just going to want to use at least four cups of broccoli, celery, carrot, garlic, onion, and one full can of coconut milk. I loosely chop everything up and then I just boil it in a big pot with, I guess, a cup and a half of water, um, enough so that the water is kind of covering and submerging the veggies and cooking them thoroughly. And after all the veggies are nice and soft, I just blend this up in a blender. Be careful pouring it in the blender if it's really, really hot. I kind of let it cool off. And then I put it back into the pot and add in the coconut milk, stirring it all up. And next, all you have to do is season it. So I'm adding salt, nutritional yeast, black pepper, and mixing it up. And that's literally all it takes. I bake some broccoli every single time and make it really crunchy like croutons. And then I just added in my sesame seeds, cilantro, and some sprouts. And it is so good. It's addicting and it hits every single time. This buffalo cauliflower pizza is something that I always crave because I love hot stuff. So I'm using leftover buffalo cauliflower, pizza sauce, vegan cheese, celery, and a pre-made pizza dough. You can make your own pizza dough using about three or four ingredients. However, I got a little bit lazy and I just bought a pre-made one, which they're pretty affordable. And you can also make these gluten-free as well, but I just stretched out the dough on a little pizza tray and added the pizza sauce. You can also just make this homemade if you have tomatoes, but then I added my vegan cheese and this is the follow your heart cheese. It's still not my favorite. I'm like still looking to find the best vegan cheese that melts and stretches, but this one does the job. I added my buffalo cauliflower and then I added celery, sprouts, a little bit of avo, and drizzled more hot sauce on top. Could use a nice vegan ranch, but this always hits the spot, honestly. 
So those are all the recipes. If you decide to try any of these out, then I would love to see. You can tag me on Instagram at Yanomi underscore Hitomi. And I just wanted to chat a little bit about intuitive eating or just healing your relationship to food, which has been a lifelong journey of mine. And the last update that I did on my relationship to food was the video where I talked about healing my binge eating. And I'll have that link down below. I am still doing really well with that and just being as present as possible with my body and with every meal before I eat it, taking deep breaths into my belly. And the biggest game changer for me was honoring how my body feels over what I think that I look like when I look in the mirror. I think I'm probably not the only one who has a tendency to one, have body dysmorphia, but two, look in the mirror and decide from my appearance how much I should eat that day or how worthy I am of loving myself depending on what I look like. And it's really unhealthy and I have slowly been reconditioning that. So I don't restrict myself to absolutely anything. If there's something I'm craving, I try to make a healthy version of it. But if I just want some chips or some vegan ice cream, I let myself have it. I just eat until I'm full and I realize that constantly restricting restricting myself was making me want foods that I didn't actually even want because I thought that I couldn't have them. So if I want chips or if I want ice cream or, you know, anything that is seemingly unhealthy, I let myself have it um, until I'm full or I'll find a healthier version of it, which feels really good in my body. And the fact that body types can literally be trends is just mind blowing. It's always been that way. Either it's really trendy to be super thin or super muscular or super curvy, which I think is the current trend as a lot of people are getting little body augmented to meet this expectation or standard that will change in a few years. It's wild to me. And so I've been trying to detach more and more from the idea of what my body is supposed to look like and just feel into my resonance after I eat. And I wanted to mention that because with these recipes that I'm sharing today, all of them make me feel so good. I feel like they digest super well. I feel energized after I eat them, but they might not respond the same in your body or digest well in your body. So I just always recommend tuning into what your needs are and then being more discerning on what you let into your body. And we're constantly eating all the time, not just from our mouths, but from our eyes and from our ears and everything that we're absorbing. And some things can leave us a lot more drained than others. So take note of that that and maybe make little changes because we are just these little vessels of energy and everything that's happening is just energy exchanges and some of them can definitely be more draining than others. Something that has definitely helped me is like realizing what foods make me bloated, what things make me tired, what people make me feel exhausted or drained or even just social media or music. And I also realized that when I'm tired, it's a lot harder for me to be positive or to show up fully. So I try to get enough sleep and there's all these little adjustments I feel like I've made to be kind to myself and kind of one of the final frontiers is just reconditioning all that society has told me to believe about my body and my worth and so I just look in the mirror less and less for any form of validation or just any external thing that gives me validation. I feel like I'm just stepping away from more and more and just being like, wow, I feel great today and I am enough and I don't need to change a single thing to do that. And it's honestly scary to accept that as a truth that I don't need to change anything to be so worthy in this moment because I think that being hard on myself has always been something that has driven me to improve, something that I thought was healthy because I'm improving. And that's true maybe to a certain extent, but the past few months I've just been realizing how me being hard on myself and failing to reach my intense expectations has just made me spiral. Like if I told myself I wouldn't eat chips and cookies and then I had a cookie, I would feel so defeated and upset with myself that I would just give up and eat like the whole box of cookies because I'd be like, I already like destroyed my body. So why does it matter? And that was something that I was doing. And um, currently I'm working out, I think like three times a week, even just for 15 minutes doing online random workout videos. And then I do random cardio all the time. I don't even know how much I weigh, but I'm just trying to be kind to myself and detach from any external idea of what I'm supposed to look like and not allow the external to really affect my internal beliefs about myself. So that's all I have for you today. I cherish you so deeply. Thank you so much for being so courageous and doing this whole human thing. I hope to see you in a video soon. Bye.